beloved in Christ, who are the people of Well of Hope. Grace, mercy, and peace be with you from our God who is love, and from Jesus who is the heart of God revealed to us. Last week I was talking with somebody and I mentioned a book that had been given to me almost 15 years ago when I was going through a rough patch in life. Okay, to be honest, it wasn't just a rough patch. It was one of those moments of hitting the brick wall big time. I'll never forget the name of that book given to me. When things fall apart. <laughs> when things fall apart. The title says it all, doesn't it? It doesn't say if things fall apart or should by some chance things maybe come apart. It says when things fall apart. According to the author, a Buddhist nun, things falling apart, it's not a question of if, but when and how badly. When things fall apart. If there is a title fit for this past year plus of pandemic life, certainly it's got to be this, when things fall apart. Since March of 2020, many things have fallen apart, and in a big way. And not just for some of us, but for all of us. And not just in parts of our lives, but in life itself. If we had any illusions about having it all together, being in control, this last year has proven us quite wrong. Things fell apart around us and in no small way within us. As you and I know, things falling apart is no fun. There is deep pain and anxiety and grief when things fall apart in no small measure because we've worked so hard to get our things together and to keep it together. Things falling apart is hard. Because our expectation is, if, if we just work hard enough, that isn't how it will go. Add to that the fact that you and I don't get to pick and choose when or how things fall apart, and it only makes it worse. It would at least be more tolerable if we could script the way things fall apart. We'd be a lot more prepared for it, we could manage our expectations, but that's not how it works, is it? Things fall apart without our permission, without our consent, usually at the worst possible moment. I've learned a lot about things falling apart during this last year. I've learned that when things fall apart, our instinct is to fight it, deny it, lament it, withdraw from it, or just throw our hands up in the air. I've learned that when things fall apart, our best self doesn't always show up. I've learned that when things fall apart, relationships suffer. I've learned that the church is not immune from the impact of things falling apart. I've also learned that if we can just rest for a bit in the coming apart of things, there is a deep truth, a profound hope to be discovered. I've learned that things falling apart is never the end of the story. Consider the situation of Nicodemus in our gospel text. We often look at the story of Nicodemus as some kind of prelude or warm-up to what this chapter 3 of John is really all about. It's about verse 16. For God so loved the world. While that single verse may be handy to memorize in Sunday school or put on a sign at a baseball game, it is meant to be read within the context of the story of Nicodemus. And the story of Nicodemus is the story of one whose world is falling apart. Look for a moment at this character. What do we know of Nicodemus? We know he's a Pharisee, a leader in the Jewish community, a teacher of Israel. He was one who was supposed to know the ways of God and point others to them. His image and understanding of God, they were fixed and they were clear. As a Pharisee, Nicodemus had been taught to understand and fear God as one who ruled from above with an absolute right to judge everyone according to an unyielding set of divine standards. Those who lived according to these standards, they would earn God's blessings. And while those who didn't, well, they would earn God's condemnation and wrath. That was God's way, and Nicodemus knew it. 
And yet somehow none of that resembled the ways of Jesus. And therein lay the falling apart of things for Nicodemus. Here was Jesus doing things, performing signs that could not be explained apart from God's power. And yet Jesus did these things with love and compassion for and among people who deserved none of it, at least according to the standards of the Pharisees. How could that be possible? We cannot understand this third chapter of John if we don't understand that the world of Nicodemus is falling apart at the seams because of Jesus. Nicodemus simply could not reconcile his framework for everything he thought he knew about God with the reality of this Jesus he had come to know, with the word and works of Jesus. And so Nicodemus comes to Jesus with the hopes of seeking some way to keep this world of his together. He comes at night because others dare not see him making such a risky venture. He comes because he has no other choice. And Jesus meets Nicodemus where he is, as he is. And in a few simple phrases, he takes the rest of Nicodemus's world completely apart. <laughs> what Jesus reveals to Nicodemus is that far from ruling above and judging with unyielding standards, God so loves the world that Jesus himself has been sent to be the incarnate expression of a love that dwells in and with our human messiness, a love that is offered for the sake of healing and renewal, not condemnation, a love that leads to and then exceeds death itself. When things fall apart, Nicodemus experienced things falling apart firsthand. And in doing so, he also began to learn that it is in the dwelling of the coming apart of things that the deepest truth is to be discovered about the way God really is. A profound hope is to be found in the assurance that it is in the coming apart of things that God always meets us in love, that God encounters us again in Jesus for the sake of being born again. This last year, I was part of the second year of Excellence in Leadership, our Rocky Mountain Synod formation program for pastors, deacons, and lay leaders. Throughout the course of these two years, we've been learning about Theory U, which actually grows out of the business world, but could just as easily been drawn from the scriptures. The basic premise of Theory U is that everything falls apart at some point or another, and that when things fall apart, it is actually the pathway to new things, to new birth. If we can dwell in the messiness and disorientation and heartache long enough, so that at that very lowest point of the you, we can then begin to see and anticipate and participate in the miracle of transformation and new life that will invariably be realized. Is this you not the very pathway on which our faith calls and leads us? This Christ-like descent into the falling apart of all things happens in a way that allows God to then create something new. Think about what we heard from this letter to the Philippians today. We were, it was said that we should have the same mind in ourselves that is in Christ Jesus, who though he was what? In the form of God, emptied himself, humbled himself, became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross so that God might exalt him, raise him anew, place him above all that is in heaven or on earth. Theory U is the essence of our faith proclamation that in the falling apart lies the seed of new birth. Friends of Well of Hope, I know you understand only too well the challenge of things falling apart. Look at your own story as a congregation. You were on a roll at the start of 2020. Let's be honest, things were moving. The sky was the limit for what you could imagine next. And then everything came to a screeching halt. You had to recalibrate, you had to pivot, and then you had to pivot again. You had to learn completely new things about being a church community. And while you managed it, and some would say you managed it pretty well, 
I know it was hard. It was really hard. It was disorienting, left you wondering what in the world is going to come next. And yet, in the coming a part of things for you, far from being absent, the God of Jesus Christ was always present and at work in and among you, giving you time in this season to focus on things like looking at your values and your mission and your vision as a community of faith. And now that Holy Spirit from whom, uh, sent by Jesus himself, that Holy Spirit is bringing forth something new that while it might feel a bit daunting in the moment, is actually the pathway to the next chapter of your life as God's people. If there's anything to be learned, friends, it's that we do not need to fear things falling apart, not when we are in the care of a God who travels every you with us into all the possibilities of new birth. And this, friends, turns out to be the very good news that we have to share with those around us, those who fear more than anything else that when things fall apart, they will never recover from it or they will never find a way out. We know that nothing could be further from the truth, not when we live together in the gospel good news of Jesus Christ. Like Nicodemus, we have come face to face with the promise itself that the God of Jesus Christ always walks with us, meets us precisely in that moment when things are falling apart. And that is where God's best work begins again. How can we possibly keep that kind of good news to ourselves? Beloved in Christ, in the months ahead, you will not only be emerging from the pandemic and all that it has taught, you will be rising from that lowest place of the you where transformation actually begins. As you look to the future, as you embrace this new vision, this new mission, a commitment to creating an entirely new space for all God's beloved people, trust that the God of Jesus Christ is the one leading you. Trust that when things fall apart, God's best work is truly just beginning. Thanks be to God. Amen.